Hey there, StarCraft fans! It's Falco Paladin coming at you with yet another edition of StarCraft II Legacy of the Void. Today, going to be a PvT featuring Clem and Mana. This is a Team Liquid map contest map called Moon Dance. Everything is super bright. So bottom right, we've got Mana, the Elder Statesman. And in the top left, we have Clem, the Young Gun. Should be an excellent PvT here. I think Clem is going to give Mana everything he can handle. I think Clem is favored based on Aligulac rankings, but Mana has been around for a super long time. He was excellent in Brood War. He's been excellent in StarCraft 2 since the launch in 2010. And has it really been 12 years since StarCraft 2 launched? Whew! Almost 12 years. It'll be 12 years in November. Oh, very interesting layout here in Moondance. All right, so a very safe third with few minerals. But that's a good trade-off. Wow, super... Well, maybe not easy to wall off. Yeah, narrower than most. The chokes at the natural. And again, super, super safe third. Alright, man. So I kind of like Moondance. I like safe expansions. I haven't seen them for a while. Corner bases with two gas. Ramps leading up to them. Probe Harassment Reaper coming out. And other than that, no gold bases, no rich Vespine geysers. No Zelnaga watchtowers, and very few destructible rocks. Four of them. Huh. Anyway, got a Reaper coming out. The Reaper's name is going to be the Invisible Man. A man only named Griffin had discovered a formula that would turn him completely invisible. As the factory is on the way here from Clem, obviously. He thinks... Oh, he thinks that he can now commit crime without consequence. Do whatever he wants, where he wants. A Terran Raven then spotted Griffin while trying to rob a Denny's. Oops. <laughs> Oops indeed, Griffin. Alright, what are we going to get? We don't get a ton of Reapers, honestly, in TVP these days. But, you know, this guy's doing it. This guy's doing his thing. He doesn't want to move into the main base because there's an adept in there. There's either a stalker or an adept. Griffin knows. Man, the light shining on this map is just brightening everything up. Look at this. Look at how bright everything is. It's incredible. I kind of like it a lot. Probe dies. Oh, second Reaper here too. Okay, that's fine. It's not Mass Reaper or anything, but maybe some kind of like a Hellion Reaper harass style of a thing. Hellion's doing bonus damage to adepts. Pretty good. Reaper's in there killing stuff. There, That is what the shield battery is going to be for for certain. And yeah, both players. Get in there. Don't die, Griffin. Griffin's going to die. So Griffin's dead. <laughs> Unfortunately for him. And the other Reaper buddy's also dead. But a Hellion makes it in. Going to try to get some of these probes maybe to die. But yeah, bruising up a few of them. But nice micro getting out of there by mana. Not losing any. Fantastic. So this Hellion is toast. These, I mean... These adepts have its number. It's only a question of, does you die after the shade or before the shade? After the shade it is, and that's totally fine. So did any probes die there? One probe died, but a Hellion and two Reapers went down? Not exactly the best thing in the world. Is someone else blinded when looking at Mana's Mane? Yeah, I'm serious. Look at how bright this is. Naruto is not wrong about that. And would it go for the quick third? But why not 345? That seems like a fine time to go for a quick third base, Mana says. I like it a lot. Yeah, a little bit, says Funka. I do like Fede. It's just brighter than you. Aww. Look these observers get along with each other. I like it a lot. Why are there so many observers in here? Oh, I guess they're casting. What do you mean, I guess? Who? What isn't, really, says Naruto. Oh, a little self-deprecating maneuver there. He's probably a Gen Zer. So we got a couple Phoenix out. Phoenix is the opening play today. Very interesting. I was so busy with the harassment, I didn't see that. But that's why Cyclones are out. Cyclones are deal with the Phoenix for sure. Turrets, an incredibly good idea in this situation. Getting that third base up back there. Clem, not quite as fast as Mana's was, but pretty much on point. Not too far behind either. Robotics Bay in production. Probably for observers more than anything else. And just maybe trying to deal with drops. Other further harassment that might be coming out here. So yeah, no oracles today. Just going to be straight up Phoenix coming out here from Mana. Very intriguing choice from him. I like it a lot. So yeah, this is 
Woo! Such a blindy, blindy map. Look how bright and shiny it is. Is this just the map maker creating an artificial light and shining it on a specific location? Lost Facility has creep interaction that blinds you. That's interesting. I don't know that uh, I've had that one show before on my channel, but maybe we'll have to go find one and see what Banana Bread is talking about here. That's a fun name, by the way. I like Banana Bread a lot. So, bunker at the front. Cool. I mean, the three base shenanigans here are crazy. Three bases. You really only have to defend one ground entry point. It's fantastic. Phoenix are killing a Marine. Hey, free damage. And then the Cyclone shows up, and then you get out of there. Poor Probe. Probe takes the hits. The Phoenix are not interested in taking the hits at all. That's fine. Wow, actually going for Magfield Accelerator. So, increase the damage done by Cyclones on their first little bit burst of damage there. Turrets are coming up. Investing in static defense is going to be a bunch of help when you're dealing with this many Phoenix for sure. So yeah, I mean, this is brruh, brruh, picking off individual SCVs. Super cool stuff, but my gosh, they die so fast to Vikings. Beautiful snipe there. So a couple SCVs die, but two Phoenix die too. So is that fair? Probably not a fair trade. I would assume not the fairest of trades at all. So who's ahead? 56 to 51 workers. Income is favoring Clem, however, because mules are super mega good. As we see them exploding as they run out. But a couple more mules at the third base doing their work. Are we mecking? Wait a second. We're not mecking this. Dude, Clem's mecking this. What? What? Okay. Clem's mecking versus Protoss. What is happening? We haven't seen this attempted in some time. Fourth base coming in here for mana. Yeah, man. It's Cyclones. It's Widow Mines. It's Vikings. This observer's like, what the heck are we dealing with here? This is so many Cyclones. Yeah, this is not just dealing with harassment Cyclones. This is, we are committing to this. Look at this factory play. An armory coming up here too. Magfield Accelerator finishing up. Oh my gosh. This is great. Clam. I wanted to see more mech play. Thank you for doing what I wanted you to do. Yeah, look how washed out the colors are. It's hardly even yellow. It's more of a tan on the Immortals, right? Weird stuff. Not a fourth base. Fourth base from Protoss is up. Disruptor is going to be pretty good here against Cyclones for sure. Things like Immortals are going to be pretty good too. The Phoenix here to lift up Cyclones and break the lock on is also pretty darn good. As long as you're not dealing with too much anti-air for those guys. Right? But are we race car mecking? It's a couple siege tanks, sure. But it's Widow Mines. But it's Cyclones, and yeah, it's just Cyclones. Trying to get shots off on that Nexus. Can't quite finish it off. Widow Mines getting some decent hits all in there as well. Wow. And then the Vikings are trying to kill the Phoenix as well as they can without getting shot down by the one Stalker and one Sentry that can shoot up in this army composition. Fleet Beacon coming in. Tempest maybe, or are we going to go Carriers for mana? What do you think? Put in the comments what you think in eight minutes. Is it going to be carriers or Tempest against this? I think Tempest would be amazing. Carriers could be pretty amazing too, but the Viking potential. The Viking potential both against both carriers and Tempest is pretty rough. Pretty rough for mana. So I'll keep an eye on it. I do love that we've got the, the little bear with the tongue sticking out and then a bear paw logo down here too. Clem. Clem is so great. I like Clem a lot. I hope he does well in Katowice, which actually is going on right now, right? Is it over by the time this is posting? I think the finals might be today. Whatever. I'm casting this a week in advance. That's generally what I do to set up a, something of a buffer. But, um, yeah. You guys know who is winning or who has won Katowice. That's cool. I'm just watching the group stages right now, which have been really exciting. Uh, Serral obviously going 10-0 is very impressive. We know he's capable of it, but... He doesn't always do it, but saving his best for Katowice makes a lot of sense. As it is, the de facto world championship for the year 2021, which is it's weird that it's held in February 2022, but I'm not going to complain about it. It's awesome StarCraft regardless, and the players take it very seriously. And then it is Carrier. All right. <sighs> Carriers against Terran. Mech against Protoss. This is great. This might just get an epic tag or like a weird tag for just how absolutely off kilter it is. Yeah, let's take down this Nexus before the army comes up and that's probably got to be a cancel. Yep, cancel, cancel. Beautifully canceled. And then just Blue Flame Hellions because that's what mech is. Blue Flame Hellions rolling in, roasting up 
Your probes. Couple probes go down there. Brutal stuff for sure. Cyclone's doing a good job denying the fifth base. Decided to back on out. Clem has got his own fifth base up and running. Upgrading this one to a planetary fortress because of course he is. And this is just so bizarre. This is the weird map encouraging the players to go for weird strategies. I kind of like it. I'm kind of a huge fan of it, honestly. Oh, Luke is trying to... Nope! Cancelled again! Just poking in, being extremely annoying here as Clem. With these Cyclones. They're really annoying versus Zerg, for sure, but it's not often that Protoss gets to see how annoying they are. I'm not sure that Zealots are what you want here, necessarily. There's Blue Flame Hellions, man. But you're dying to cannons, so that's actually great, man. Cyclones can burn through the healing of a shield battery overcharge. Incredible stuff. More blue flames roasting up them probes. Really trying to slow down the income of the Protoss here. Income yeah, still favoring Clem. Mules are still good. It's 84 to 62 workers though. Who even needs mules when you're up 20 total workers against your Protoss opponent? Clem doesn't. That's who. So the Zealots can chase all they want. So lift, lift and then you're focusing on the Phoenix so the Zealots can actually get some decent hits off. One Cyclone goes down. Another one going to get charged to death as well here. Okay. That's a minor victory at the same time. Lifting in a range of, like, Liberators and Missile Turrets is not the greatest thing for this Phoenix. Disruptor first Nova coming out. Carrier count is all the way up to six now with a seventh in production. Clem's maxed out. Mana's around 175 supply. This fifth base coming up for the third time is being attempted quite nicely. Additional command centers on the way here from Clem. That's how you know he's feeling comfortable. Because he feels like he has the time and energy to do that. Mortals coming in to deal with the Siege Tanks. Widow Mines, you know, Immortals taking those hits too. No big deal. Carriers being absolutely problematic here. Sure, there's a couple of Thors out. That planetary getting burned out would be a problem. But, I mean, the Vikings are trying to get shots off as well as they can here too. Scans brightening up the scene even more. Carriers getting taking those hits from those Thors. Then one carrier goes down to the single target, long range attack of the Thor. In that mode, they were given that to be very good against, against things exactly like carriers. Broodlords, battlecruisers, tempests, giving Terran a bit of a more of an answer to those long range distance siege units. It can usually set up out range and Thors can't do a lot about because they're doing diddly splash damage against things that are big and tanky and capital ship type, right? So, kind of read this Hellion attack quite nicely. Shuts that down. Little Zealot run by attempt. Widowmine has something to say about that. Liberator has something also to say about that. 178 to 175 total supply. Protoss mana looking all right. Looking fine. Still committing to this carrier stuff. He still believes in it. Even if it didn't necessarily go super well for him the last time there was an engagement with those Thors. Carriers engaging again. All right. Disruptors chasing the Thors back a little bit. As a zoning tool, they're working pretty well here. But yeah, once the Thors can kind of set up and get some hits off, oh, the Vikings, too, are just such a beautiful answer to this. Viking Thor. I love this from Clem. It's the perfect compositional choice to deal with these carriers. So man is still continuing to try to make this carrier theme work. He's making three at a time. Getting plus three air weapons. Getting... Blah, blah, blah. Oh, these Thors are all over the place. You're getting... Is that shuttle speed or warp prism speed? I think that is warp prism speed. Just for zealot warpids, right? Mech is super slow and non-mobile. If you warp in a ton of zealots in the main base against mech, it takes a while for the mech units to get up there and help out. Widow mines all over the place. They're very good against interceptors. Interceptors fly out, catch a widow mine, right? Like this. Bam! Several Widow Mines going down, or several, well, one Widow Mine dies, but several Interceptors go down. Good trades for sure. How many Interceptors have died so far? 84 is a big number. How many Thors have died? A zero. Good babysitting from Clem, keeping those alive for the time being, anyway. Knock on wood. I'm not sure if you can hear my desk there, but it is pretty woody. Like clones are firing away at this nexus. Not going to kill it, though. Too much army here. The Vikings. Oh, there's enough Vikings to one-shot. What? Hang on. 
One shot previously injured carriers, maybe. Ah, not quite enough for that. Chasing away, chasing away, pulling back. Cyclones want to get a hit off on something, but then they have to pull back because Disruptor Nova pops in there too. This is insane. This is such a weird game. I like it. I'm weird fun tagging this one, I think. Have I ever weird fun tagged a professional game? I believe I have. I believe that's something I've done on the channel, so that's not too weird for y'all. There you go. Tempest production coming in, as we already knew. Additional Tempest there. Zealot making sure the 12 o'clock doesn't really happen. Look at how bright this guy is. He's like, I wish I'd brought my sunglasses to Ire. Or oh, from Ire to this place. This moon dance planet. Tectonic destabilizers on the way, increasing damage to Tempest to buildings. That's what you get, Widow Mine, for existing. You get smashed in the face. Clem's just, he's pretty happy, man. He's an 82 total workers. He surprisingly doesn't have a bank. Which I guess he's been building a lot of middle missile turrets, command centers, refineries. That all does definitely cost a whole bunch. But both players building up something of a bank here. Mana's at a 1,300 minerals, 900 gas. Yeah, man. Those swarms getting them big, big hits off. Disruptors. Wow. Disruptors taking down a Thor. That's not something you see every day. That's for certain. Oh, storming the Vikings is such a hot move, too. That's really nice. Storming the Vikings, bruising them up so carriers kill them more quickly. Siege tanks sieging up. And then the Tempest pick off the siege tank. Very nice play there. I mean, this is... Sniping off the Thor seems like priority stuff here. Not really doing it, though. Using carriers and Storm to finish off a Thor. That's not something you see every day, either. Disruptors really want to get a hit on up there, but they can't. I mean, he really wants to save this Nexus. Can he save the Nexus? No, the Nexus is gone, Brutal. Absolutely brutal. And now the commitment. Now that the Nexus is gone, a little bit too late here from the Elder Statesman mana. That's for certain. All right. Well, he's making additional carriers, disruptors, tempests. Working on Blink for his stalkers. This base has been mining. No gas there, though. Interest there you go. Now he's like, I guess I should get gas at this base. Because Clem certainly has gas at his base. It's still 82 to 66 workers, which means... The Mana's army is bigger when they're both maxed out, and it's 131 to 86 total supply for him. So, hmm. I guess I should mention I got this replay from Wardy. I don't know what he cast it as part of, but be sure to check him out. I'll put links to Wardy's stuff in the description, his YouTube channel, and his Twitch. Check him out. Let him know Falcon sent you. Uh, this is going pretty well for Mana. 191 to 148 supply. The Planetary Fortress goes down. Absolutely strong. Strong push right now. Out of mana. Army value 123 to 98. Did Clem make too many SCVs? Possibly battle cruisers. We're getting battle cruisers operational here. What a treat this game is. Yeah, planetary. Nah, carrier DPS is bursty, man. SCVs dying all over the place here. Clem does not have a bank. He can't just be like, oh, thank you for killing my SCVs. I'm going to make eight battle cruisers now. No. He can make three battle cruisers, sure. That's fine. It manages like, wait, can I just Oh, he kills the starport building a battle cruiser. Mean. Now it's only one battle cruiser coming out at a time. Dude, this is insane. The Vikings oh taking down that command center. The Vikings can't get too close because they get stormed right into oblivion here, but Ooh, that's a beautiful one shot. <laughs> snap, snap. <laughs> Dude, is Mana gonna beat Clem here? Remember when I was like, yeah, Clem should win this game. Oligulac says so, but you know what? That's why we watch the games. Because you never know who's gonna win. The top 20 players can beat anybody else in the top 20 in one game. Maybe they can't beat him in a series, but in one game, that is very, very true. Which is why March Madness is so insane. All right, man, don't don't hold back and let Clem build up. 
Don't let Clem build up. What are you doing? Why are you defending? Are you just making sure that the six o'clock base is actually saturated with probes and doesn't die to thing like blue flame hellions? Like, I understand that. I understand your impulse to try to make that happen, and I appreciate it. Oh man, that orbital's floating out to see better days. It's also very dead. And GG Mana is your winner in 20 minutes and 21 seconds. Absolutely killer, killer play from Mana there. Clem went for the weird stuff first. He did. He went for the mech stuff first with the Cyclones and the Hellions and then the tanks and the Thors and the battle cruisers and the Vikings and all that stuff. And Mana's like, you know what's really good here is carriers. You might not think it's good, but I have been using carriers since like 1998. And I know how good carriers are, and I can control them basically perfectly. And sure, he did end up losing 12, which is a lot. But then he had 12 at the end of the game, so it was fine. Resources lost are a full 34,000 for Clem and 23,000 for Mana. Insanity. It's insane it's that big. Dude, Mana is absolutely a beast sometimes still. You can't take him not seriously. You have to take him seriously. I just think you do. But yeah, Carrier's making it work on this very bright, very weird map. Pushed up the left side. The Thors weren't really answered. The Vikings weren't working. The Storm was so well placed. Really made the Vikings feared to come on in. And the counterattack. I mean, sure, this Nexus died, but then Mana counterattacked into a win there. Super, super impressive play out of Mana. The Polish player. Who I keep calling him the Elder Statesman, but I'm going to check. Just to make sure we see how old he is. Because I want to say he's like 29. Although maybe he's 30. And the Wikipedia says... he. Oh, hang on. Searching man is like, do you mean... I think he's 28. Okay, so he's not even 30 yet. But he's old in StarCraft time. But yeah, he's been playing Brood War for... He played Brood War for years. Huge there. StarCraft 2, huge here too. Not really someone who won a ton of premier tournaments, but always very good, very solid, and able to win games against people like Clem, who I think is like number two or number three on the Ligalak rankings right now and killing it at Katowice. So, well done, Mana. Weird fun tag applied, and that is going to be it for me today. So this has been Falcon Paladin coming at you with yet another edition of StarCraft II Legacy of the Void. Go ahead, hit that like button, hit that subscribe if you like what you saw and what you heard today. You can also catch me on Twitter, Facebook, Patreon, and Twitch, all at slash Falcon Paladin. And until next time, as always, thank you so much for watching, and you take care of yourself.